cited in an access orientation, uh, whereas it's also, also automatically considered that then the parking provision uh, might not be required to continue. Um, given that, then the DCO technical um, uh, scale of the parking policy, um, it's recommended to approve all subjective conditions requiring submission to the masters um, and requiring details of material. Um, thanks, Chair, and uh, thanks to the members of the committee who were able to make the site visit, which I requested at the previous committee. I think it was useful in so much as this site isn't um, what you can't see it from the open highway, so it was useful for members to go and take a look. It is a very unusual location uh, insofar as I don't think uh, a dwelling has been there for a number of years, still certain, for want of a better expression, relics on the ground and some building that has, has left us uh, some time ago. <laughs> and uh, basically, uh, you know, I understand residents' concerns, uh, but largely they are uh, concerning matters that will be dealt with at the, at the stage where we have a more uh, detailed planning application. Uh, and so I, I feel as though we can't do anything but approve this outline planning commission at this stage. And of course, are there any developers who wish to develop the site to work closely with local council and, uh, and residents to make sure that whatever they may or may not apply for at a later stage is acceptable. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Yes, thanks, Chair. Just a very quick one. I didn't mention this at the site visit that we went to the other day. Today. We don't want a five story dwelling well there. I wondered if we could put a condition in that limited the height of the building to two stories, which reflects the property surrounding it on all sides. I think that would be a helpful consideration to avoid any massive intrusion with you know, a four story townhouse or something like that. I wonder whether that would be possible, Chair. Um, you could impose a condition on those sites. I mean, the, the issue of scale is reserved matter, though, so an application would be needed to determine the scale, which if, if that application came into a three story piece and may or may not in terms of how it could be compared to how it could be reviewed. I suppose you would have to be certain that the development of greater than two stories would, would have less than the impact there, and then having to be a clear reason for that condition being imposed. And without knowing the layout of the site, Thank you, Chair. Proposal is a 
support and does present members with recommended option B uh, by way of update to that report. And solicitors asking for the owner to submit in his written indicating personal circumstances, which, which mean that um, our advice really is that the solicitor should have prosecution be pursued by the council. It's more likely that the result is either not to be removed or find fines and or costs and costs of being recovered. On this basis, um, it, it is actually recommended to members of option C is pursued um, options A and B um, because it would be a meaningful outcome for the recovery of costs and for the recovery of money paid by the council. I think it's also been said that the costs of revenue in the first instance that option C is pursued. So that is uh, no prosecution for the issuing of form of caution to enforce the notice of protection in place to form the responsibility of any future owner. Yeah. 
it's been sense. But one of these sort of long term, long term plans of Mayor Hall and Heather's House it, it has been something that the council has been considering for a while. But my sort of concern is that if we, part of the solution for that may be um, a redevelopment of some of the other land that is in public ownership. So long term wise, the renovation of the road that house, I don't know.
that is my last of Matthew there. I hope this is Matthew's very last of my mom oh. too. So um, I've worked well, last. The years goes to the bottom of the country. I'm going to pass both to David for a moment. David. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, as, as members will be aware, Matthew is uh, sad to leave uh, the Council on, on the 14th of March to go into private practice, and obviously uh, we wish him very uh, well in, in that new venture and uh, his future career development. I do just wanted to say a few words that um, Matthew has been a really good uh, Principal Planning Officer during his time with us here. Uh, his level of expertise and knowledge that he's brought to dealing with a whole range of planning applications and certainly many that have been quite complicated. Certainly been valued by myself as head of service and all colleagues within the team and hopefully um, to members as, as well. Uh, I think his attitude and approach to dealing with planning applications and the creative approach of actually making things happen it is something that uh, he needs to be applauded for and I think will take him far in the future. He, he will be a great boss to us um, you know, I, I can't, uh, I can't hide that and uh, disappoint the person that is leaving. However, I think we just want to wish him well for the future um, because he's an excellent officer. Thank you very much.